All right, hey, thank you for joining us at the Telesummit. You've tuned in to five ideas that will revolutionize your children's ministry. My name is Jim Lovendusky. I've been doing children's ministry for 35 years, and maybe you are just got involved in children's ministry. You've been chosen to teach a class, or maybe you've been put in charge of the ministry, uh, and you're nervous, you don't know what to do, you're looking for help, you're, you're praying, God, show me what to do, and so you're in a good position. So why children's ministry? Well, let me tell you why. 85% of every person that comes to Christ does it as a child. And 75% of people that are in the, the ministry, were called to the ministry, were called to the ministry as a child. Now get this. Some scientists tell us that 99% of what a person learns, he learns before the age of five. So what does that tell us about the importance of nursery ministry and how important children are? And of course, George Barna in his book, uh, Raising Spiritual Champions, said that by about the age of nine, a child, what a child believes by the age of nine is, or his core values are set, which means if he believes it at nine, he's going to believe it for the rest of his life. So that tells me that we've got a job to do reaching children before they're nine, reaching them as young as possible and telling them the great news that Jesus loves them and wants to come and live in their heart and give them a purpose and a plan for their life. And so let's sit back and settle back. You know, the first thing we need to do is we need to redesign the culture of the church. Uh, sometimes, you know, the old ways, that you remember how it used to be, for those of you uh, who are a little older, uh, remember the children's ministry was often relegated to the basement or to some place where it was, uh, there was no equipment or they shoved you into a hole. And the basic attitude was, look, just take the kids somewhere and make sure nobody dies. Well... I know, and I'm so glad to hear that it's changing and that people are beginning to see how important children's ministry is. In fact, I just was listening on a national public broadcast from a, a national denomination where a pastor got up and he said these words. He said, I am a senior pastor. He said, I believe that I'm, I need to hire two children's pastors because I believe the children are the most important. Here's what he said. He said, here's my goal. After I retire from the ch senior pastor, he says, I want to become a children's pastor. Now that's quite saying something. And uh, so he believes how important children's ministry. People are beginning to understand it. George Barna, in his research, began to see how important children's ministry is. And so it's changing, and people are beginning to put more emphasis in it. People are beginning to spend a little more money and hire people who are trained or professionals and take the time and energy to make children's ministry special. So the first thing you've got to do is change the culture. If the culture in your church is children's ministry is not, get a hold of George Barna's Raising Spiritual Champions, read it, and get yourself informed, and then go on a campaign. Begin to tell people. I know people used to come back to the service and say to me, oh, you missed a great service. You know, maybe there was a great song or the move of the Spirit or uh, the pa pastor preached a great sermon. You missed it. And, uh, and they felt sorry for poor little us over in children's ministry. So we had to retrain them. We had to say, hey, listen, do you know how many people got saved in our children's church today? It was fantastic. They all stood for salvation. And uh, God is doing something. And so we, were, we, we believe we're, we're where God is doing the most work in children's ministry. And so that's what you've got to do. Begin to change that thinking that the children's ministry is the, you know, the, the it used to be, you know, we get our best guy and he's the preacher and then we get the second best guy and he, he's the associate pastor and then the youth guy, when he becomes a little bit older, he becomes a senior pastor and uh, then, then, you know what, all the other people who can't do anything else will make them children's people people that work with kids. Well, you know what? That's not the way it is. I believe the very, very best need to be involved in children's ministry. So if you're there and maybe you think like you're wasting your time, I don't think you are. I think you're investing your time in probably the most profitable area of children's ministry that you can ever imagine. So uh, let's sit down and talk about a few more ideas about children's ministry. And let's talk about uh, something that's really important to me. Uh, I know I was hired by a, a church, and when I came to the church, they were great people and uh, great teachers. And, um, but they what, what they would do is they would have a couple, and each week that couple would come in, teach the class, and then, again, they would rotate. The next group would come in the next week and so on. And so basically, every week the kids were introduced to some new person. There was no continuity. So I gathered all the staff together. I sat them down, my wife and I, in our living room, and uh, I said to them, I said, from now on, we're going to do everything 
uh, with children's ministry, we're going to ask this question. What is best for children's ministry? Not what's best for you, not what's best for somebody else, but what is best for the children in our church? And I ask them the question, is rotation of workers the very best thing we can give our children? And sheepishly they look down, and of course the answer is no. The worst possible way to teach and reach children is by having a different person in every single week and uh, ruin that continuity of thought, of process, of goals, of visions. And so it's very important. So I ask him, could, would, you, uh, would you join us? Would you, would you teach every single week? And you know what? Of the 40 teachers I had in the room, every single one of them said, yes, we will teach every week. You know, you need to inspire people to do something great for God. You need to change that culture, change the thinking, change the way you look at rotation. Now, I know rotation, uh, some of you have to do it. I understand that. But you know who I want teaching my kids? I want somebody teaching my kids that is passionate about Jesus, who wants to see the lives of children change, who wants to invest their time and their energy uh, in the lives of children who wild horses couldn't keep them away. I don't want somebody who just says, you know what, all right, you know what, I'll volunteer for a little bit, I'll fill in a date, you know, maybe I so won't feel guilty, and then, but you know, I got to get in church because I got to get fed. And so I don't want that person teaching my child. I'll give you an example. One day I told some of our staff in our classroom, we had a class of uh, third grade, we had a large bus ministry, so oftentimes we'd have a couple hundred third graders in, a, in one big room. And so I told our staff, I said, look, you need to go into the main service and uh, spend time in church because pastor wants you to do that. Well, all right. So off they go, off into the main service. About 10 or 15 minutes later, they came back in the door and said, we don't belong there. We belong here. This is where, what God has put on our heart. We can't wait to be here. We love the kids. We want to spend time and energy into teaching them and uh, ministering to the children. So that's who I want teaching my kids, somebody who's passionate about it. Now, not everybody's, God hasn't called everybody into children's ministry, and maybe you're not the one. May, you know, if, you, if, you, uh, if you're only doing it because somebody made you, or maybe you're doing it so you won't feel guilty, perhaps you're not the right one. But if you, uh, if you will pray and ask God and change the way you look at it, change the culture, and begin to say, you know what, I believe children's ministry is an effective ministry. I think God would, can do some great things for you. And uh, so the, the other thing is I want to touch on is this idea I've got to get in the church to be fed. Now, my wife is always t telling me, you know, watch that, because this is a very touchy, sensitive area. So I will say this, you know, eat the meat and spit out the bones. If what I'm about to say offends you, just forget I ever said it and go on, but, if God, but pray about it and see what... You see, a lot of people say, well, I've got to get in the church, or you know what, I can help in children's ministry, but you know what, I need to be fed. You know, and that's true. All of us need to be fed. Uh, Jesus is the bread of life, and he's the living water, and we need him. We need Jesus in our lives. But you know what, babies, when I think about it, when I thought about it, you know, babies get fed. You know, you feed the baby, you prepare the food for him, then you spoon feed him, and, uh, you know, he eats. But you know what, once they get a little bit older, you say, you know what, make that sandwich yourself. And pretty soon you, get, you grow up and you make your own dinners. You make your own food. You make sure that you get fed yourself. And so uh, uh, I'd like you to consider that going into church, as important as it is, and I think everybody should go there, it's not the place that you should get fed. Where you should get fed is at the feet of Jesus with you and your personal devotions and prayer time so that when you come into church, you're not dragging your, yourself into church and saying, you know, I just, I just hope I can make it through the week, Jesus. You know, if I can just get into church, maybe if I can get around some Christian people, I'll make it. No, you should be fired up, ready to go because you have daily devotions. You're talking to God. You're on fire yourself. And when you come into church, you're not coming to church to soak it up. You're not coming to church to get fed. You're going in church to minister to other people who are young babies and, and help feed them. Get somebody who's new. Make a disciple. Teach a class. That's what your purpose is to go into church and do that. So I want to encourage you to do that, uh, to think about that, because I think that's an important thing. All right, point number two, get a vision for what God wants you to do. What kind of a ministry? The first thing I think is important is you have to really pray. Say, God... Where do, you want to, where do you want me to take the kids? What kind of a children's ministry do you want us to have? And I think it's important to get yourself a ministry name. I know our church, 
our ministry name was Kids with a Mission. And the reason why we wanted to have a name like that is because we wanted our name to reflect a feeling of what we believe God has called us to do. You know, the Great Commission says we're to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And so, and uh, it's not just to sit in the church and soak. The philosophy that we wanted to give the kids is that our job is not only to give our lives to Jesus, to grow in Him, to become strong, but then to go and to take the good news out to the world. So we did often did things where we can take the gospel and we, we were training them with puppet shows and uh, drama and different kinds of things and oftentimes took them on the road where they ministered to the streets with people and also uh, Kids of the Mission, we also had for them a project. For instance, we had uh, every kid was required uh, to do a missions project and that a mission project was to help somebody they couldn't see, someone in a far off land. And then a ministry project, that was helping and ministering to somebody they could see, a next-door neighbor, uh, somebody who uh, uh, they, they meet with every day. And then, of course, the third project was to do a community project, and that is to do something uh, like cleaning up the trash in a certain area, and then write about it, take a picture of them doing it. And so it was a part of what we did. All right, so after you've gotten a name and you decided what kind of a ministry you're, you have, I think it's important to decide what you want you, the kids to be when they get out of your children's ministry. In other words, what kind of a person, what kind of experiences, what kind of things that they have learned. For instance, you might want them to make sure that they know all the major Bible doctrines. They have memorized and, and own all the major Bible scriptures as far as things like the Romans Road, how to lead someone to Christ or the Ten Commandments in the right order those kinds of things. And also, you might want them to know, that, be able to tell the major Bible stories. And not only that, how the Bible stories connect. Uh, one of the, the goals that I would have for my kids is that they'd be able to take us through the Bible without any notes. And from Adam and Eve, uh, the garden, and, and then on to Noah, and then Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and then the judges and the kings, and so on, the New Testament, and uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and so on. So they'll be able to have a sense that what things happen and when they happen and how they fit together, those are the kinds of things that are important. So I think it's really important for you to have that down. These are the things, and then have some way to test them so that you know whether or not they know it or not by the time they get... Uh, to sixth grade or fifth or sixth grade. The other thing you might want to do is coordinate with a youth ministry and uh, be able to have them transition. So the youth ministry, they, they just you hand them off, and there's a plan to work it out so that they just don't jump into youth ministry and it's totally foreign to them. Work it out so there's a nice transition between children's ministry and youth ministry. Very important. Okay, third number point. Make your ministry visual and memorable. In other words, uh, one of the things I did when I first went into the church, I said the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to get a couple of animal costumes and we're going to put them outside the door so when people drive into the parking lot, we're going to have the animal just waving and shaking people's hands and coming in and greeting the kids when they come in and, and uh, having fun. We went out, we went, there was a store that was uh, closing down that had a bunch of animal costumes. We bought three or four of them and uh, uh, so we had the costumes and so immediately people begin to say, hey, children's ministry, what's happening to it? it? Something's happened in the children's ministry. Well, all we did was get a volunteer to stand, stand out there and wave people uh, in a dog costume. It wasn't really that fantastic, but it's the impression people get. So when the parents are coming in, they come in, if your building is worn out, the, the carpets, uh, everything's dirty, and they go, go to a place that doesn't look nice, take some time. And uh, what I'm going to do is show you on the screen now a few images while I'm talking of people have taken the time to decorate their children's ministry uh, in a nice way. Now, some of them have paid. I know I was just at a church where they spent $250,000, a quarter of a million dollars, not to build the children's ministry facility, just to decorate it and to, to furnish it. And so some people are really taking some time uh, and money and effort to making it a really nice place. You want to make as best you can with the finances that you have, the people and resources that you have. I know for our church we didn't have a lot of money, so we got a lot of the artists and they painted the walls and make it look good. I know we used to have the Bible barnyard and we actually had a, a little moat. You, you walk, into the walk into the classroom and walk over a bridge. We actually had water and fish in the water. I mean, so there's, a, there's a, a way you can do it, but we had time, uh, we spent a lot of time doing it. It cost us a lot of time and energy, but not a lot of money, and we had a blast doing it as teachers and as staff, and the kids loved it. And still today, 
all of them do, that are grown up now, they all talk about the good old days when all those rooms were decorated like that. So it can really have an effect on the children, the way that the children's ministry looks. Make sure it looks nice. Make sure it's appealing. Make sure you've got something uh, like this. Okay, I think it's really important that uh, you have a, a uniform or some kind. One uh, church had uh, that I saw I thought was the best, they all had referee shirts on. So they're kind of loose and... And if you go into the church, you immediately know who the teachers are, who the staff are. They're all wearing referee, referee shirts. Uh, you can use uh, some kind of a, a long sleeve shirt, a short sleeve shirt, a, a T-shirt that has some kind of a logo on it. But what it is, uh, you know, have something that it looks like you really have thought it through. You've got your act together. You're ready to go. All right. So it's important. Get somebody that doesn't go to your church, has never been in church, maybe a friend. Get them to visit the church and give you a, a critique of what it was like, what they experienced. Because a lot of times, you, you, because you go to the church often, over and over again, you've been there for years, you get used to it. Uh, maybe you get used to this, the paint is falling off, that the grounds are poorly kept, that there's no, people don't know where to go, what door to go in, where the children's ministry is, they have any idea. And get somebody to give, give that to you, or if you can't find somebody, at least go in to get somebody on the ministry to go in, themselves and pretend they've never, never been there and go through the experience of somebody so you can identify the areas that make it unfriendly to families. For instance, if it takes really, really long to check in, there's a big long line, they have to go, they're missing their church service because they have to put the kids in, find ways to make it easy and quick for them to get into the children's ministry and stay there so they can be happy. All right, that's really important. I think it's really important. And then the next thing I think is really, really important is do things with the kids. Go places. One of the things that we do is every spring and every fall, we have a promotion. It's uh, six to eight weeks, a fun, exciting time. We have a theme. Uh, maybe we go take off a, a, a movie that we've just seen. Uh, one thing we used to do, we did the Lord of the Things. And for eight weeks, we had a, an ongoing story about the Lord of the Things. He's the devil. And of course, uh, uh, he, all he wants is things. And so... Uh, we took those characters and made it fun. And then we had a point system. We set up a, a point system. Every kid that earned 10,000 points, for instance, could go on a, on a trip. Well, the first year we did this, I didn't know where to go, so I told the kids, we're going to take you on a mystery trip. And um, oh, they were all excited about it. And uh, we decided to keep that theme, and it, was, it worked out really great for us. We would actually uh, tell the kids, if they get to 10,000 points, they get to go. You know, 1,000 points if they come each week. Uh, maybe 500 points if they bring their Bible, another 1,000 points if they, they bring a visitor, whatever, whatever you want to work out. And then they got to go on the trip, and they looked forward to it. We actually blindfolded the kids. You should have seen it. It was very crazy going into a local mall with a giant, huge rope, all the kids blindfolded, holding onto the rope, going into the, into the building, and everybody looking at us. They never forgot it. They still talk about it to this day. And so we kept that tradition. We go on mystery trips two times a year. And then we do a lot of things with the, with the, the families. We go on uh, in the fall, we would go maybe to a, a hay maze, uh, a corn maze, or we would go to uh, some kind of a bowling alley, do things together. We might go down, uh, we live in New Jersey, so we might go down the Jersey Shore, we might go into Philadelphia, uh, we might go into New York City. Do something with the kids, plan events, have lots of them, as many as you can. Sleepovers, the best. Sleepovers are the best. They're the worst for parents. They hate it and the staff. But the, for the kids, it's like a fantastic thing. They just love the, the kid, girls dress up in the, you know, it's a very, we, ours, we make a very spiritual time. They, we have a, uh, two hours of worship and praise, and we have a message, and we get the kids to pray, and it's a very spiritual, intense time. And then they have some fun. We get the, the boys have the video games, and the girls are putting on makeup and hairdressing and so on, and they've got lots of food and fun and uh, videos, and we just have a blast, and we our, by having that, our teachers get very close to each other. We get to know the families, the parents, and really built a tight uh, camaraderie rather than just the kids coming in on Sunday and leaving and they don't know any of the other kids. Do lots of things with the kids. Very important. All right, point number four, positive discipline. I think it's really important to have the church is a positive place where kids come and uh, when they walk through the door, somebody's saying, oh, glad you're here, so glad you're here. They get into the classes and, 
Uh, you know, the old way that we used to do it, and, and we had a dear old saint that we used to go to our church. I remember she would stand herself at the door, and she would, the kids would come, and she'd say, take your hat off. Stop your running in the church. What's the matter with you, kid? Don't you respect the house of God? And I thought to myself, gee, I can't wait to get to that church and get yelled at by this dear old saint. Well, it's silly. When, we, when they come in, we need, to have a, uh, we need to show them love and compassion. And so it was our goal for all of our staff that, that the moment they came in, we begin to compliment them. So glad you're here. Oh, I love that outfit. Nice glasses. Look at that smile. Hey, did you get a new haircut? Something that we can say about the kids that, that's true, and we don't want to lie, but something that's positive about them. Then when the kids sit there, uh, the way we did it was first thing we need to do is stay in your seats. Everybody say it with me. means quiet. Everybody say, the whistle means quiet. The quiet. And number three, anybody, not any found, anybody found breaking this rule, anybody found breaking this rule will have to listen to a tape of me singing in the shower. <laughs> you must have fun. All right, you got that? Whatever the rules are, Set the rules up, but make sure they're plain and visible. The kids can see them. They know what they are. And once you've decided, uh, once you've seen the rules, the kids will understand. If, the ki if you don't have a rule, you can't punish a kid or, or, or uh, explain to a kid about a rule that you don't have, they don't know about. Very important that you set the rules. All right. The next thing is that when you have a discipline problem, and a lot of what, what a lot of people do is they yell at the bad kid. The kid's out of his seat, the kid's calling out, the kid's pushing another kid. And so what they do, they'll take time in the class and punish that kid in front of all the other kids. Terrible thing to do. The, what we found in the positive discipline is, uh, is that we find the kid next to the kid is doing bad, and we be, begin to uh, compliment them. So we find the kid is doing wrong, and the next kid say, look, I'm so proud of how they're sitting. Look at that kid, how good he's sitting. And so when I blow the whistle, it's not a second later. It's not a half a second later. It's one twentieth of a second. Everybody blink your eyes that quick. Everybody wiggle up. Let's practice. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. Unbelievable. Look at how straight they are. These kids are fantastic. Naomi's been, she's been in a coma for over three weeks. I can't believe it how straight she's sitting. Unbelievable. Even with her hair all over her face, she's sitting straight. Excellent. Look at this. Fantastic. And look, and they said guys can't be good. They said that men can't sit straight. They said the kids in America are no good. They said they were rotten, but not here. Look at these kids, how great they are. Fantastic. Unbelievable how straight these guys are sitting. I can't even believe it. These are the best kids in America. And look at the tiny tots, how great they are. Look at, wow. Look at this. Unbelievable. Nothing flinches. These are the best kids in the whole book. And they said little ones could sit straight. I am so proud of you. Excellent job. Fantastic. What a great job. All right, now here's, we got a sticker. We got some stickers right over here. Let's hold those stickers up. Teresa, what we're going to do is we're going to be giving out the sticker to somebody sitting really straight, really quiet. We're not going to give just anybody. You've got to be sitting very, very straight to get a sticker. So here we go. Let's do one sticker. Only one sticker every time we blow the whistle. Find the straightest kid. Somebody sit straight. Here we go. Today's sticker's worth 10 sherry shares. Here we go. Ready? One, two, three. It's hard to pick. There are so many good kids. Fantastic. Look at how she said. Look at that. Fantastic. Look at that. Look at that. And I find that almost 95% of the time, the bad kid will straighten up when he sees the good kids being praised. So instead of spending your efforts and time yelling at bad kids, spend all your efforts and time praising the good kids, and you'll find out that the bad kids will want to be praised, and so they'll automatically behave. We're, I'm telling you, it's fantastic. It works. Uh, what we do is we have a whistle, and we blow the whistle, and we tell the kids, sit straight with your back up against your chair, hands folded, sitting so straight you look like a statue, your hands folded, your, uh, your back straight, looking straight forward, your hair isn't growing, your food isn't digesting, your feet aren't stinking, nothing is moving on your body, your mother puts you in the freezer next to the pizza, and uh, of course they laugh a little bit and they're all sitting very straight, and then we begin complimenting kid after kid after kid, works fantastic.
It's positive discipline. Find a way that all day long, from the moment they come into that building, walk down the hallway, that somebody is saying, thank you for coming. I'm so proud of you. Look at how straight you're walking. I always catch the kids doing something good. I would go into class after class and say, I can't believe it. I co Look at how good everybody is. This is fantastic. And then my famous line is, are you always this good? And the kids will, some of the kids will tell the truth and say no, and some will lie and say yes. But anyway, it's a great way that we had to uh, uh, compliment the kids and make them feel like they're somebody special and that God has a plan for their life. So positive discipline, very important, works every time. Let me just stop right here and just say this. If there's anything you can do is have fun. You know, don't worry about whether your lesson is perfect. Don't worry about whether you say all the words. Don't read it. One of the rules we had in our, in our children's ministry was anybody caught reading the quarterly to the class will be shot because we want you to read that yourself on a different day, internalize it, pray about it, and then find ways that you can teach that effectively to your children so that they will never forget it using drama and object lessons and all kinds of fun things. And you know what? Have fun. The two rules, have fun and love the kids. If you can just have fun and love the kids, the kids will want to come back every single week. They will say to their parents, as our goal was, if their parents wanted to go to a different church, they would say, no, 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 we can't go to a different church. We have to go to the church. We love this church. They love us. We love them. We can't wait to get there. And uh, oftentimes I'll, I've had parents say to me, you know what? We got up. We were going to think about not going to church. The kid would say, no, 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 no. We have to go. Everybody up. We've got to go to church. Sometimes the kids are up early begging, the, pulling the parents out of their bed. So it's really important to make it a place where when they come that they know that they are loved and everybody's having a great time, having fun, and that you feel the love of God. That is really important. Point number five, use creative and effective means to teach the children. Uh, one of the products that we use is Drama Toolkit, the Drama Toolkit. My wife, who is the queen of sound effects, every time we do a drama, she's always playing a background music, and uh, she's got sound effects going in the background, and she's always uh, making it fun and exciting for the kids. You know, if you're doing drama and you haven't used sound effects, and music in the background, you have not taken it to the level that it can, can be taken to. There's nothing like telling that story and hearing the, that mood music in the background, and then you hear the crickets in the background at night, or maybe an owl hooting, or something of that nature. So Drama Toolkit is an effective way. This product uh, that you see on the screen uh, has 427 different sound effects, and it has 130 video backdrops, like the burning bush, and uh, 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 pillar of fire and, and all kinds of fun, exciting things. And whatever Bible story, the tomb and the Golgotha, Golgotha, uh, however you say it, and all kinds of different things that when you're doing a drama, you can 
project the background on the screen or a wall or in a television and uh, use the sound effects to make that story come alive and to make it a visual and a, an auditory experience. As you know, those of you who have been teaching, you know that the kids learn three different ways. They, they're either a visual learner, they're, they're an auditory learner, or they're a kinesthetic learner. That means they, they learn by touching and doing and feeling. And so using the drama toolkit is a very effective way to do that. The Children's Pastors Toolbox is six DVDs loaded with all kinds of uh, great things. We've got uh, video backdrops. We've got 100 Old Testament questions and 50 New Testament questions. Uh, a lot of times we test our public school kids, our private school kids, but we never test our church kids. We have no idea what they know. So it comes with a test that you can print out, give it to them. Uh, we also have musical game elements. Bible brain stuffers, all the major Bible verses animated. Uh, musical game elements is that fun, exciting video and great music in the background. Uh, uh, and then we have kids' church elements. This is a, what we have designed so that you can uh, help you carry you along in your children's church program. You're going to do offering time. You plug in the offering thing. If you to do worship time it's time to worship if you're going to do sword drills and so on whatever different thing if you're going to have a, a talent show or maybe you're going to show a movie we've got something that you can use in the children's pastor's toolbox and then we have uh, a product called awesome stadium effects awesome stadium effects is a uh, a visual way that you can uh, we used to often do games and we have two different scoreboards we'd have a wooden scoreboard with wooden dowels and we'd have these numbers we'd put up on the wooden dowels we could never get it right nobody could add right it was always a mess it was big clunky uh, so what we've done is produce a product called awesome stadium effects and that's where you can electronically put the scores on the board so everybody can see it's got it'll play videos sound effects it, uh, it's got a timer on all kinds of great uh -huh. things that you can use secret weapon for recruiting volunteers is six television commercials short enough to play in your service that uh, you can recruit children's workers with. Also, it comes with handouts and a complete program, how to recruit volunteers. We've got things for recruiting nursery workers. We've got funny. We've got serious. And uh, we've got things that will change their uh, way they look at children's ministry. Animated Bible maps. I have tried to teach the kids the Bible with that little map in the back of my Bible. I said, how come somebody hasn't done something to do this? And so what we've done is we've taken all the major Bible stories using satellite images and a 3D modeling program. We have put them together so that you can, uh, if you're talking about uh, Abraham's journey or the Exodus, you've got some uh, clips that you can actually show the actual locations where all of these things happen. We have a tour of Israel, a tour of Jerusalem. We have uh, Paul's missionary journeys, uh, the Nazareth uh, journey from Mary made from Nazareth to Bethlehem. And these are great ways to think about it. We're trying to teach the kids about a land that we don't, they don't have a context. Many of us as teachers, we don't even have a context of how to do it. So animated Bible maps is a great way to help your kids see the story, where it happened, and it'll help them memorize it, remember it and, or memorize it and uh, come to a, a better understanding of what they're learning about. Very important, animated Bible maps. Our two newest products are called Media Soup. Media Soup is a, is a, a way to uh, take all of your CDs, all of your DVDs, all of your graphics, and put them all in one program with a click of a button, play them. Well, we designed this for children's ministries, and we designed it so that it's easy. There's only one direction, right click and load. That's all it is. A five-year-old can walk up to this and play, do, do, the, do your children's ministry just by pushing the button. When you click on the button, it works. Very easy, fantastic product. And then finally, Bible Quiz Master. Bible Quiz Master is a product that we've de you know, developed a lot of our, in our denomination. Uh, they have these uh, boxes and they're little, actually they're old foot pedals for sewing machines. And there's five of them. It costs like $400 when they buzz in. So we design, we design a program that's, got, as you see on the screen, and now I've got the Bob, Sally, George, Hank, and Denise, Jimmy, Frank, Mary, Sue, and Wendy, uh, and the teams that are there. If I want to add a different name, I just simply click on the name and type in a different name that I want here. So you can very, very quickly add the names. Uh, I'm going to go over here and choose the setting. I want the question to come up full screen, and when I'm ready to, once I've got this, the your categories in and the names of your players in, uh, and you're ready to play, you go over here to click play, and uh, down here we have the sound effects. 
and music section where to, to make Bible quiz very exciting. And this is how we designed it to play. All right, it's time for Bible quiz. So let's hear for our contestants. Bob, Sally, George, Hank, and Denise. Let's give them a big round of applause. Come on now. All right, our category. Let's do Old Testament. When I click on the Old Testament box, notice that the question comes up on in the little box to the right, and uh, that's when I see it. When I want to show it to the kids, I just click Go. <coughs> the question comes up on the screen, full screen. Whoever, <coughs> raise, whoever raises their hand first. <coughs> contestant number two, raise your hand first. I click the Two button on the, on the uh, computer. If they get it, they have... <coughs> So they get it correct. So I go over here to uh, next category. I click on Miracles of Jesus. There's a slight delay. And now I see the question. When I'm ready to show the kids, I click on Go. And now whoever raises their hand first, if contestant number seven or eight, I put on the I put on number eight, raise their hand first. I click, I just touch number eight on the keyboard of my uh, computer. And notice that the timer is going, and they have now 18 seconds left. They have 30 seconds to answer the question. If they get it wrong, I just click the wrong button. Oh! And the sound effects play. Of course, all these sound effects are changeable. And let's go to another, let's go to Prophets. And again, when I'm ready to show the kids. <coughs> which prophet was taken to heaven in a chariot of fire? The answer is, of course, somebody raised their hand number two. Contestant number 10, raise their hand, and they get it correct. Yeah! All right. So that's Bible Quiz Master. All seven of these products you are going to love. They're fantastic. Check it out, awesomevideostuff.com. Well, we're at the end of our session. And you've been very well behaved. I'm very proud of you. How straight you're sitting and you haven't thrown any spitballs. You're doing great. I'm so very proud of you. Are you always this good? You are fantastic. All right. Well, it's time to wrap it up. You are involved in the greatest ministry I believe there is in the church. There's no more effective ministry than reaching 85% of all the people who come to Christ. 75% of the people in ministry were called to ministry when they're children, and 99% of what they learned, they learned while they're children. You are in an excellent position to change the lives of young people and to make a difference. Before they're nine years old, remember, what they believe at nine, they believe by about the age of nine, they believe for the rest of their life. This is the most effective, most fruitful ministry you can be in. Don't do as little as possible. Do the most you can do. Make every Sunday Super Bowl Sunday. Do your best. Use props and drama and all and object lessons. Make it fun. Make it exciting. Make your children's ministry a place. When the kids come in, they can't wait to get back because they feel love. And when they look at everybody, they're having a blast. It's a great place to be. It looks great. The attitude of the people is we love children's ministry. And you will make a difference in your, commun your community. I guarantee it. Thank you very much. Let me take the time to pray for you right now that God will use you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray for all of those that are watching in the Telesummit that you would touch them and minister to them, that you would equip them and give them all the gifts and talents they need to do the work that you've called them to do. Use them, God, to reach this generation and to change our nation and the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Have a great day.